good afternoon. So, today we're going to talk about the top 10 books I read in 2015. Now, these are in no particular order. I didn't like one book more than the other. Well, that's not entirely true. There were some books that I did enjoy more than others, but these are just books that, out of the 50 some odd books I read in 2015, these are the top 10 ones that I read. First off, the first book is Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. Am I even saying her last name right? I don't think I've ever heard it correctly pronounced. I don't know. But seriously, Moriarty does it again. Like, I have not read one of her books without just being on the edge of my seat the entire time. It was just so tasty and so complicated and so excellent that you wanted to know the ending, but at the same time, it was just sad that it ended. Second book on my list of the top ten books is World of Pies by Karen Stoltz. Now, truthfully, this only got three stars on Goodreads from me, but that was more just because of its because of how short it was. It was a very short, quick read, and it would have been great if it would have been maybe a little bit more spread out, a little more, had a little more information, but that being said, I still enjoyed it. It was a perfect little sweet and satisfying morsel, like a nice warm slice of pie with some extra vanilla ice cream on top. Oh, it was brilliant. If you haven't read it, I suggest it. It's short. It's only like 175 pages long, so you can read it in one day. And it's just a good little, like, happy look at someone's life and just all these different pies and just events that happened. And it was great. I, I suggest it. The third book on my list is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Dewar or Doer. I should probably look up how to say his last name, man. Um, I'm a sucker for anything that takes place during World War II. It doesn't matter if it's nonfiction, fiction, sci-fi, just anything. I have an obsession with that. Like, I will physically just search out books that were written that take place during World War II. The majority of the books that I read in 2014 were books just on, like, World War II things. Mostly nonfiction, so... It's just, it's a book that's hard to explain. I know it's one of those books that you either really, really liked it, or you really, really didn't like it. It's very beautifully written. Uh, I just really loved the two stories, how they tied together, and it was kind of an interesting mix and viewpoints of World War II, even though it was fictional, it still seemed like it could have been real, and I like that in a book. Uh, number four on my list is More Than a Season, Building a Championship Culture by Dayton Moore. Okay. I'm from Kansas City. I'm a Royals fan. I have lived through Sucky Royals. I have lived through Semi-Good Royals. And then I got to witness 2014 Royals, which was a great year to be a Royals fan. Though you could definitely argue that 2015 was an even better year. But who's to say 2014 doesn't rock either? It was just a really interesting look at the process that Dayton Moore used to build the now championship Boys in Blue. And it's just kind of interesting because he got a lot of the same feedback that fans were going, you know, nobody thought the Royals were going to do anything. He was told that he was just, you know, wasting his career, it was a dead end, you know, the Royals can't do anything. They are just going to suck for the rest of their lives, and nothing is ever going to be good. Well, obviously we've showed them that is wrong. Thank you very much. Um, so it was really interesting. I, If you are interested in baseball or even the Royals, especially the Royals, I would suggest this book. Uh, it just shows a lot just about the process. It's kind of not the money ball process, but it's not not the money ball process. It's just sort of he really understood what needed to be done to make Kansas City great, and he really did. So there's also an excellent forward by Alex Gordon, who I'm hoping, hoping, hoping stays with the team, but if he doesn't, at least he's given, a, given us 
quite a bit of time. Uh, number five on my list of top ten books I read in 2015 is Just One Day by Gail Foreman. This was not my typical read. Uh, I generally don't like that sort of happy, romantic, love at first sight fiction, too sweet little novels. It's just not really my thing, but someone suggested it for to me, and I really just needed something to listen to while I was cooking. I actually did this as an audiobook, and a lot of times when I cook, I listen to audiobooks for NPR. By the time I just really needed just a nice little book that I could, you know, get little snippets, but not have to feel like I had to sit there and listen to it, which is easy to do when you hear more, or when you read more, like, advanced books, like things like All the Light We Cannot See, or Big Little Lies, you know, that you really have to kind of focus on, or just want something you kind of just have in the background, but... It was a really nice change of pace. I The story was well thought out. It was very interesting. I know that she wrote a couple sequels, which I will eventually read. It just kind of depends on what my 2016 reading schedule looks like. I haven't really spent a lot of time putting it together, because truthfully, a lot of the book lists that have come out had a lot of books that just don't interest me. For some odd reason, 2016 just so far hasn't really been a big... I have to read these books time. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't really matter. Moving on. Number six is The Hundred Year Old Man Who Climbed Out the Window and Disappeared by Jonas Johnson. This was a. Oh, I don't know if you can hear that. The cat is using the litter box next to me. Joy. This is a translation from a book, a Swedish book, and it's the Forrest Gump of books. Even if Forrest Gump is already a book, it's this, it's a fictional story about this man's life, and he interacts with a lot of historical figures, and sort of his effect on history, and it's very interesting. I mean, it's, it's that Forrest Gump, you know, like, where he, um, you know, meets the president, and does all this stuff. It's kind of that same concept, and it's a lot of really interesting look on history, and good and bad. And it's a great adventure that includes mystery, murder, and a guy who just wants to live his life. He doesn't give a blank that he's a hundred. He just wants to be himself. He's lived a great life, and he wants to continue to live his great life. He does not want to sit around and twiddle his thumbs in an old folks home. It's a really great book. It's I did struggle to get through it. It took me a little bit longer than most books to read through, but... Once I was able to kind of get into the pace and sort of, you know, be able to... It's one of those books where you can't just read, 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 read. You have to kind of read a chapter, let it digest, read another chapter, let it digest. And once I finally realized that I didn't have to, like, read, 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 I can kind of come back and forth to it. It was a lot easier to read, and it ended up being an excellent book. I suggest it. Uh, they made it into a movie, which I have not seen, but I guess it's really good, so I'm hoping to see that sometime this year, and if I do, I'll let you all know. Number seven on my list is The Paris Wife by Paula McLean. Um, it's about Ernest Hemingway's first wife, and honestly, I've never really thought much about Ernest Hemingway. Sure, I've read a few of his books. They're okay. Um, and I especially haven't really thought much about his wives. I mean, who really thinks about your favorite authors, artists, etc. wives or spouses? Honestly, I don't. Um, I picked up this book after reading McLean's Circling the Sun, which I will talk about in a couple books from now, because it also made my top ten list. Was, I just really like the way she writes. She really makes historical fiction, especially historical fiction that's based on true, like, real life. Um, fun. So you feel like you're learning something, but not necessarily, it's not as cut and dry as, like, an autobiography or biography would be. I mean, Ernest Hemingway was a keel, or a heel, excuse me. And so, yeah, it's an interesting book. I definitely like Circling the Sun better, but I will talk about that when I get there. Um, which will be after this next book that I'm going to talk about. Number eight on the list is The Bitter Season by Tammy Hogue. I received this um, for review free through the Penguin First to Read program. It was the first book I ever got from them. I had never read, read, 
read. Wow, that's a brilliant cat. I never read uh, Tammy Hogue before. She's always been on my list of authors that I'd like to read, but I didn't really know where to start. She's written a lot of things, and um, so I was just like, hey, this looks really good, and I wanted a book to like took place during winter. I tend to read seasonal books a lot of times, so I, my books in the summer tend to be a little bit more soft and a little more bright and airy, and the books I read in the fall tend to be a little more darker. Books I read in the um, spring tend to be a little more positive, and the books I read in the winter tend to be a little more cold and, you know, enclosed. It's That's when I read a lot of mysteries. There's just something about reading a mystery with a cup of tea around a fire or a Christmas tree or whatever time it happens to be in winter. It's just sort of my favorite thing to do. Um, but Tammy Hogan is an amazing writer, and I cannot rate or read more by her. I'm not sure. I'm still not exactly sure where I'm going to start. I think I'll continue with the first few books in the this series. I can't remember what it's called. I'll put the information down below because I'll write out the list down there. And um, it was just a really great mystery. It had a lot of really excellent red herrings. There's a lot of things where you thought you knew what was what was the answer, but then she would throw some weird random fact in there, and you're like, where the heck did that come from? And it just came way out of left field, and I really enjoyed it. And, like, if you've never read a Tammy Hogue, I would suggest it. Just go get it go get this book or any book in that she's written because even though this is the only one I've ever read, I just have a feeling that every single book is just fantastic. So yeah, definitely check out Tammy Hoag's The Bitter Season. Number nine on my list is Circling the Sun by Paula McLean. I mentioned this before when I was talking about The Paris Wife. It Just like The Paris Wife, it was beautifully written. Um, it's about a woman named Beryl Markham, who grew up in Africa during the time that the English were colonizing it, and she was definitely one who broke a lot of barriers. She didn't want to be a housewife. She didn't want to be, you know, sitting around mending dresses. She wanted to just get out there and play. She was the first woman um, horse trainer in Africa. She was the first woman to successfully fly across the Atlantic from east to west. She just did a lot of things, and she just did them because she wanted to. She didn't care about society or any of that junk that was holding back. Okay, that might be a little harsh, but, you know, limiting, I guess is a better term, women at that time period, and still today. And so it was an interesting read. The only thing I have to say about it, for a book called Circling the Sun, it spent very little time talking about her flight across the Atlantic from east to west. You would think with Circling the Sun, it would be, you know, mostly about the prep work for that and more about it. There's a little snippet at the beginning and a little snippet at the end. That's the biggest thing I have to say against this book. And truthfully, it's really not a big deal, but if you're going to name a book Circling the Sun and spend most of the back talking about how she's the first woman to do this flight, maybe write a little more about it. Could be wrong. I don't know. Still, Paula McLean is great. I will probably read whatever she writes about from now on. She's on my, you know, look out for list of authors. And the number 10 on my list is Attachments by Rainbow Rowell. Seriously, can Rainbow Rowell do anything wrong? Every book I've read from her has been a fantastic little morsel of love. She's quirky, she's great, she understands real human emotion. I mean, just everything about her books are amazing. Like, if I could ever write a book, now I've written some, I've never really finished any in a fantastic manner, I would hope that one day that I would write like Rainbow Rowell, because she is just fantastic. It doesn't matter if it's an adult or young adult book, she just always knocks it out of the park. Attachments was great. The concept is a little funky because it's about this, you know, this um, IT guy who's reading emails that are flagged because they're not necessarily work emails. And that's a little creepy, but he doesn't seem creepy. It's one of those where it's not like you 
I don't know. It's very complicated. But it's definitely a good read or any of her books. Eleanor and Park. Um, Landline. Oh, what was that one? Oh, my goodness. I want to call it fan fiction, but I don't think that's right. And I haven't read Carry On yet. It's on my list of books to read for 2016. I'm excited by it. I'm sure it will be fantastic because she can really do no wrong. So, yes, those are the top ten books I read in 2015. I will post the list down below um, with some links to it on Goodreads if you want to find more information about it. They were fantastic. Um, I'm looking to do a short review of the books I read each month, but I'm not entirely sure how that's going to work out. We'll have to see how that works into my schedule. If not, I will definitely do a top 10 list for 2016 when we get to that point next year. Wow, can you believe that it's January already? I just about said June. Skipping a whole six months. It's all good. Whatevs. So, yeah. That is it, and I will see you later. Bye.